Hey, I'm Lee from Food Fire Knives. Uh, we specialise in cooking over fire, foraging, and uh, large feasts at epic locations like we are here down at Lulworth. So we're going to do our one of our favourite little dishes, which is our fire roasted carrots. So these are grown organically by Feed the Soul, who we're sharing our stalls with at Best of All. And they produce some fantastic produce. Those are leave for the seagulls in the morning. But yeah, beautiful organic carrots, bunched. Now we leave, the, we leave this all on, because it all adds to the flavour. We use this, once it's smoked at the end, to dress the dish. So they kind of smoke, the whole carrots smoke themselves very slowly for a few hours over the, over the fire. This crisps up and becomes like dust, almost like a seaweed, it's amazing. So what we're gonna do is very simply tie these bunch of carrots up. And then we're gonna hang them off of this indirectly over the fire. about there. Now the idea of that is that we don't want them to be directly on the coal because they'll burn before they cook. So we just want them to hang nicely above and then as they go, hopefully, they'll slowly smoke over the charcoal. Now, very important with the fuel for, for this. Obviously, most of these dishes are cooked or at least shown the fire in some way. So the fuel that we use is very important. We use a, an amazing uh, two different charcoals. We use a, a local Dorset charcoal that's, that's um, sustainably managed, uh, doesn't come from a rainforest, which is quite important. And, uh, and probably more, more importantly, this we're not using a disposable barbecue. The bane of our life, especially down here in Dorset, a lot of our heaths and forests have been burnt to a crisp this summer because of those dirty things. Um, but this is um, sustainably managed, from sustainably managed woods. Um, it is, uh, use, it uses native species. So we use an oak, there's hazel, lime, sycamore. Uh, that's quite important because like I said, most of, the, most of the charcoal that you can buy nowadays comes from, um, unfortunately, mangroves, which is a bit of a shame. So it's cheap, but it's cheap for a reason. So do think about the fuel you're using. When you're slowly cooking, smoke is essential. So you can use hardwoods as well as your charcoal. Um, really good charcoal does impart some flavour to the dish, but wood is something that gets it in a lot quicker. So this is a solid piece of oak. And I'm just gonna chuck a few lumps of oak on there to just slowly tick over. And that's gonna create smoke within the vegetables. So hopefully the carrots, as they cook slowly, uh, will just kind of steam themselves in, in their own skin, okay? Next is our ember beetroots. So this is, these are, Beautiful organic beetroot. Um, again, organically grown, and these are going to cook directly in the coal. So this is a method we call dirty cooking. So they're going to go straight in the coal, just like that. There's no faff, this is proper direct heat cooking. And the idea of this is they are going to steam. We always keep the tops as well, because that's amazing, just like chard, very, very tasty in the dish. But the beetroots are gonna slowly roast over there in those embers there. Um, and they'll take sort of anything from 30 to 45 minutes, just slowly roasting and turning in the fire. Um, and the whole idea of that is that the outside is gonna char up and create a, a kind of like encase, encase the beetroot and steam itself in its own juice. So it's a wonderful, beautiful way of cooking. Um, and it works for sort of really solid veg like that and celeriac, etc. Then we're going to 
move on to the tender stem, which is very simple. Roughly sliced so that it's not too thick and equal all the way through. And that's just gonna go on the grill, very simple. That doesn't very, really need very much at all, that tender stem. It's as, as the name suggests, it's already pretty tender. So we're just gonna just lick it with flame, that's all, really. A little bit more on there. And then we're gonna stick some courgette on there as well. Again, I like, I like courgette raw, so this is really just gonna give it a very light color. Nice and chunky on the grill. Very simple. And then I'm just going to put a little, dress it with a little oil. And then some salt. And that should create some lovely smoke. So next, the start of the dish, I think, well, one of my favourite fish there is in the sea is mackerel. So we're going to smoke, smoke these beautiful fish over the, uh, over the fire. So first of all, starting with a bed of rock samphire. A rock samphire is something that grows all over the coast in England. Um, it's all the way around us as, as we speak now. Um, it's not something I, I, I tend to enjoy eating as it is. Pickled is okay, but it's quite a strong flavour for me. It's not my favourite, but it does have its uses. This, in this instance, we're going to use it as a bed for our mackerel. Um, so the mackerel have been brined for a couple of hours in a salt water brine. So they are literally a bit of seawater. I wouldn't use it if you're in, a, in an enclosed bit of water, but these are open ocean so it's much safer so it's a salt water brine which is just perfect three and a half percent salt which is a, a perfect brine there's rock samphire in there wild hogweed seeds wild alexander seeds and wild carrot seeds that's just been heated up slightly on the on the fire to infuse and then they've been left to brine all the way through for about two to two and a half hours and they've just stiffened up a little bit then we're going to put them on the bed of samphire very simple it looks quite pretty too. And that samphire, as it smokes, will impart quite a lot of flavour into it. And then we're going to add some smoked chips and solid oak. So the solid oak is going in there. And then we're going to cover the whole thing with oak chips, just like that. And then using a very rustic pan lid. We're going to stick that over the top, just like that. And this will uh, make an oven and ho hopefully hold the, the heat in and also the smoke. The other most essential part of, of hot smoking over an open fire is, is alcohol. One to drink, obviously, because it's quite warm usually, but also to dampen the flames. So if that does burst into flames, we don't want that actual flame on the fish. We want them to slowly smoke. So probably take about sort of 10 minutes or so, depending on the fire. Uh, but do you want that just to dampen the flyer down, if you can? So, after about half an hour, the beetroot now starting to char up really well. Uh, there forms a crust around the outside, which like I said, kind of protects it. Now to most people that will look burnt. And actually, you know, on the outside of the skin, it is. If you notice we didn't peel the beetroot, we didn't do anything to them apart from to take the long tops off. So this is now charred because it's been cooked dirty directly in the flame. And all we do is gonna peel away the outside skin. And inside is a beautiful kind of sweet, smoked, steamed beetroot. It couldn't be more delicious. Now a lot of people are worried about burnt bits on, on food. I think they're flavor, in the right amount, they're flavor. So we're gonna peel these beetroot, but what we're not gonna do is, is is make it completely clean. I want some of that char in it because that's what's going to give those little bursts of flavour in the dish. So that is, you know, perfect as it is. Another 
golden beetroot here. Uh, the reveal is quite a magic, and the taste of this, I don't think there's anything else on earth, really. Beautiful, beautiful, dirty beetroot. And there's a purple one. So here are those wonderful beetroot, cooked dirty in the fire, excuse my hands, cooked dirty in the fire, dressed with wild thyme. So wild thyme grows all the way along the coast in England, we're quite lucky. Um, it grows a lot smaller than our, the one that we have at home, but it packs a lot more flavour. This is dressed very simply with a chive yoghurt uh, with a little bit of gin in there just to thin it a little bit. The gin works really well with that kind of charred, smoky beetroot flavour. Um, and then uh, very simply olive oil and that's it. And then to our carrots. So these are our smoked carrots. After about an hour or so, once they've come off the fire, they're left just to sit and rest. It's quite important, it's equally important to rest your vegetables after you've cooked them on the fire as it is meat. So the, veg the, the carrots have been resting for a good half an hour and that just softens them all up. And, in, and, the, and it sucks all the juices back into the, into the uh, carrot. Most of our dishes are vegan or vegetarian. We do cook meat, but it's not always the center of, of our meals. We kind of try and shout about the veg a lot more. These have been dressed with a cashew cream cheese and then sprinkled with a wild ducker. So the wild ducker has got your nuts and seeds as usual, but we also add into that um, hogweed seeds and smoked carrot seeds, which impart a really light sort of orangey uh, flavour to the dish. Very, very simple. And then our tender stem and courgettes, very simply pushed across the fire. We don't want to cook them all the way through. I like the courgettes and tender stem kind of raw, but um, with a really good bite to them. So it's just shown a little bit of heat and that's it, a little bit of smoke and, and nothing else. Then we are dressed it with some wild herbs. So there's wild marjoram in there, wild chives and wild thyme again. And then we put in a little bit of our Dorset Blue Vinny, one of our most famous cheeses in Dorset, which kind of cuts through that, uh, the, the, the vegetables, it's beautiful. There we go. So these mackerel have been smoking for about 10, 15 minutes. They've got a lovely char to them but they're not burnt and they're not cooked like on a grill. They've just been lightly smoked. So the, the heat of the smoke has cooked them as opposed to the flame or the charcoal itself. Um, and what you want is really that meat to, you almost, what I, like, I prefer when I'm hot smoking especially is to cook the fish just undercooked of what you would think you'd, you'd cook your fish. That makes sense. But it wants to be almost medium rare, which I, I know it's not something we eat fish very much like that, but it's, you want it to hold on to the bone if you can. And then again, just like you rest meat, you rest your vegetables, fish is equally important to rest. And then it will, it will carry on cooking for a few minutes after you've taken it off the heat. But what you want is the, is, is the flesh to come off, but not too easily, okay? And then you've got a beautifully smoked, moist mackerel, caught here in Dorset. That'll do.